What's up guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing my spoiler review for Spider-Man No Way Home. Before we start, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the post notification bell so you can know if it's a free video. Let's just start. So the film opens with the ending of Far From Home where Peter Parker's identity is revealed. And I think it works well in this film because it sets up a lot of things where um, people don't really trust him anymore. They don't believe in him. And J. Jonah Jameson uh, uses it very well in this film. Uh, his character obviously is not like Peter Parker, and it is used very well in the third act, but it's also used in the first act. So I thought the opening sequence was fantastic. Uh, Doc Ock's reveal at the end of the first act and the beginning of the second act is fantastic. That whole bridge sequence is easily one of the best sequences in this entire film. Uh, Doc Ock versus Peter Parker's uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man, fantastic. Uh, I think... I think John Watts really did a great job with uh, the cinematography, and I'll speak about that a little later, but the action sequences were fantastic in the entire film. Um, all the villain entrances were great. Green Goblin and Doc Ock had crowd-pleasing entrances. I thought Green Goblin's entrance was easily one of the best character entrances since Avengers Endgame. Um, and Doc Ock, where he's rising out of the... Uh, out of the side of the road and you see his tentacle rising up and then you see Doc Ock coming out of the smoke. Fantastic. Fantastic fan service. Uh, Electro, he had a good entrance and I thought he was well utilized in the film. Jamie Foxx did a great job as Electro once again and I like that he was yellow not blue. I think the yellow um, really makes him more of course comic accurate but I think it works better than the blue. Uh, the Lizard and Sandman, now they're not really used that much in the film they're not used as well they're still entertaining but they were definitely the weakest of the villains uh, there are references to other spider-man films of course three spider-man are in this film and i'll speak about that later but they do reference the other spider-man films very well it does also keep the continuity of the spider-man films for example spider-man and doc ock well tom holland spider-man doc ock on that bridge sequence Doc Ock mentions the power of the sun in the palm of my hands. Of course, he's speaking about um, his weapon in Spider-Man 2. And I think that they did a good job with referencing other events in past Spider-Man films, but still keeping this film original and more of uh, Tom Holland's film. Um, Tony Stark tech for Doc Ock for his tentacles and Electro's arc reactor, they were, they were awesome. They were very, very well used in the film. Uh, I think... They look better than they did in Sam Raimi's films and Mark Webb's film. Uh, Electro definitely looks 10 times better with that arc reactor. And I think Doc Ock, I think his tentacles with the red, uh, the Tony Stark tech, all of it, it looks better than Sam Raimi's Doc Ock, but I think Doc Ock in Sam Raimi's film looks a little more comic accurate. But I still really, really like the look of Doc Ock in this film. Um, Matt Murdock, his entrance and cameo in the film is great. Charlie Cox, once again, does a great job as Matt Murdock. Um, he's very entertaining, very likable to see on screen. And he, he's obviously helping Peter with his case uh, for you know being Spider-Man. And I think his entrance is very well used in the film. He is very well used in the film. He's not in the whole film. He's only in that one sequence, but that one sequence alone is instantly uh, one of his best sequences um, and one of the best sequences in this film. Um, Willem Dafoe. Now, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin is very, very creepy in the film. He is by far the best that he's been I think he's even better in this film than he was in Sam Raimi's film. Um, he's phenomenal in this film. And I'm glad that they made him the main villain because I think the other characters, while they were good, Green Goblin, Willem Dafoe is, is easily the standout in this entire film. He is the best character, best actor in this entire film. Um, and I think he also does a really good job with interacting with the other villains as well as the other characters, including Spider-Man. Um, Tom Holland using his spider sense to sense Green Goblin was fantastic. That is the sequence in the apartment, um, I think it was Happy's apartment, where Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Electro, Sandman, they're all 
they're all in this one sequence trying to find out how to get back to um, to their original homes and all stuff. Even though they're going to die, uh, Doc Ock was trying to get all the villains and him back to uh, their original home. And I think Green Goblin's turn in that entire film, his descent into madness, fantastic. Especially in that apartment scene. Um, again, Willem Dafoe does a great job in this film. Um, he, he's very, very creepy in that sequence. And I'll speak about him a little later, but Willem Dafoe is easily the best in this film. Uh, Aunt May. Now, Aunt May, her death sequence was easily one of the emotional, uh, one of the most emotional sequences in the entire MCU for me. Uh, it was handled very, very well. John Watts did a great job with this emotional sequence. Michael Giacchino's score for her death sequence, fantastic. Um, the the use of uh, music for this film was very well done, and I think that Michael Giacchino and John Watts did a good job with not putting music in a specific sequence in Aunt May's death to make it more emotional, and I think it worked. Um, and she also, of course, utters a line with great response, with great power comes great responsibility, and I think that, of course, Tom Holland, his Spider-Man, has never had that set to him in any of the three films other than this film. And I think it works very well. Um, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's entrances were perfect. They don't enter the film in the big action sequence. They're in the film for a good part of the film. They're in the film for the middle of the second act all the way to the end of the third act. And I thought they were only going to be in the film, you know, in that last part of the third act where they're all fighting the villains. I thought it was just going to put them in there for that one sequence. But they're in it for the whole time. And I think they did... Very, very good job. Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield were very, very good in this film. Uh, the three Spider-Man, their banter and their dialogue was great. Uh, I like to see Tom Holland, Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire all interacting with each other, um, speaking about, you know, what they were doing, uh, how they fought the villains, who they fought. It was awesome. The three Spider-Man sequences, all of them were fantastic. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson. Now, he has a bigger role in this film than he did in Far From Home. He actually interacts with, well, he doesn't interact with them, like talking to them, but he does see them. And there's one sequence where the feast truck, the lizard, jumps out of the feast truck and J. Jonah Jameson um, sees him. And I think that J. Jonah, J. Jonah Jameson was very, very well used in the film. Of course, he's not going to be fighting anyone, you know, it's J. Jonah Jameson, but he was very, very well used in this film. John Watts placed him perfectly in this film. Uh, the three Spider-Men, now, when they are swinging in the third act of the film, Michael Giacchino's score, his Spider-Man theme, is easily one of the best fan service moments in Marvel, uh, or in the MCU. That sequence alone made the entire third act for me. It was, it was phenomenal. That sequence... Michael Giacchino knew exactly how to do that sequence, and I think John Watts knew exactly what he was doing when he was placing um, and arranging those sequences in that third act, because that sequence alone made the entire third act for me. Um, it's also good to see Tom Holland's Spider-Man maturing into the Spider-Man that we all know, because I thought, while he was good in all his other films, um, he, he wasn't really maturing like Tom Holland, I mean, uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's character did, but this film, he is Spider-Man. He is by far the best that he's been as Spider-Man in the entire MCU. This one film made him into the Spider-Man that we all know. Um, now, his fight sequence with Doc Ock is easily one of the best action sequences in the Homecoming trilogy. It's the first fight sequence between Spider-Man and the villains, and that sequence alone it was, I don't know how long it was. I think it was some like six, seven minutes to ten minutes. That entire fight sequence, it was it was fantastic. It was well shot, uh, well directed, and I think the choreography was also very, very well done. Um, Tom Holland's Spider-Man vs. Green Goblin, which of course is in the third act, is brutal. It is just like Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. It is very different, but it's similar in the violence and the brutality. Uh, I think it, this is easily the most brutal fight 
in Tom Holland's Spider-Man um, films, as well as the other films that he's been in, like Avengers. This is easily the most brutal fight sequence, and I'm glad that they kept the brutality of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films and put it inside this one. Um, now, the apartment sequence between Spider-Man and Green Goblin, on a cinematography level, this is one of John Watts' best sequences that he's ever done in the MCU. The glass shattering, the fight sequence, the choreography, it's the directing, fantastic. It's phenomenal for this film. I did not expect that, um, that well uh, of directing for this sequence because the other films, while they were also well directed, this one sequence easily put John Watts at he's like one of the top directors in MCU for me. Um, Doc Ock's turn, of course, he turns good in the film again. Uh, it sort of mirrors Spider-Man 2 um, for his turn in the third act of Spider-Man 2, but it remains different and original, and I think that um, John Watts did a good job with that sequence. Uh, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, his reunion with Doc Ock, it was, it was fantastic. It was wholesome. It was very, very well done. Um, it was good to see those two characters reuniting, and I think it works for this film. Uh, Tobey Maguire, now, he gets stabbed by Green Goblin. I actually kind of thought that John Watts, I knew he wasn't going to kill him off, but a little part of me actually thought that he might kill him off, but of course he didn't, but, and I know he's been stabbed before, but this one felt real, and it felt, um, it felt emotional because you didn't know what was going to happen to him, but it's, I thought that sequence in the third act of the film was awesome. Um, the ending sequence. Now, the ending sequence with Tom Holland um, swinging through the snow, it was it was awesome. It was fantastic. I've always wanted to see Spider-Man in the snow swing, and he put in this film, and it was awesome. And also, going back to the third act, I liked how Tobey Maguire stops Tom Holland's Spider-Man, because um, now, of course, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, he is experienced. Um, he is... He's been Spider-Man longer than Andrew Garfield and uh, Tom Holland, so he's obviously more experienced than them. And I liked how he stopped Tom Holland from killing Green Goblin uh, because it really shows more of his character. Um, the post credit sequences. Now, Doctor Strange, he's awesome in this entire film. Benedict Cumberbatch, he's very, very, very good in this film. And he does a lot of things in this film that are mind-blowing and again going back to John Watts cinematography his directing the sequences the magic sequences they're they're awesome they look exactly like how um like how Doctor Strange 2016 uh how Scott Derrickson did that it looks very very similar but at the same time very very different so I thought John Watts did a great job directing those magic sequences um, the ending sequence. Now, Tom Holland, him swinging in the snow, once again, fantastic. Um, the post-credit sequences. Now, there are two post-credit sequences. One of them is the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness teaser. That is the one that I think that you should definitely stay around for. Uh, the other one is a fun sequence, but Doctor Strange 2 teaser trailer, it was awesome. Seeing evil Doctor Strange, just like from What If?, Fantastic. Uh, so that's about it. This film is the epic conclusion that we've, we fans have all been waiting for. Um, and I hope you all check it out because this film is easily one of the most ambitious and one of my favorite films in the MCU. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the post notification bell so you can know for a free video. My name's Peter, and thank you for watching.